Hello, my name is Andreas and I'm a co-founder of Total. And today I want to show you how to create a simple website. We're going to add elements to your page, we're going to set attributes, we're going to learn about layout and styling, and then we're going to learn about responsive design as well. And finally, of course, we're going to publish our website. Now, I do have a little disclaimer. Um, I do assume in this course that you have a little bit of an understanding of HTML and CSS. Um, you don't have to know how to code it, but understanding the different HTML elements and how generally CSS works. If you worked in another no-code tool for building websites, that's perfect. Then you, you're all set. So right here in the Total Editor, I've got a new project set up um, called Andreas Website. And I'm going to turn this into my personal little website with uh, some social links in the bottom footer. Um, so the template here already comes with an H1 and a paragraph. And that's actually kind of perfect for what I need. So I'm just going to edit this uh, to say, there we go. And I think the subtitle here we're going to call... Um, Like that, perfect. Um, I kind of want a dark theme, so we're just going to quickly change the background color on the whole container here. And then we're going to change the text color on the heading as well as the subtitle here. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Um, next, I want to upload an image. So I'm going to pick the containing element here, because that's going to be the parent, the image is going to be inside. And then I'm going to click Add Element. And then I'm going to go to Media and Image. Um, and I want to upload an image from my computer. I've got a nice one I can use. Uh, so I'm going to go to Attributes. I'm going to select the image, go to Attributes, and then right here next to Image, there's a little Upload button. And I'm going to pick this one um, here. So... If you have an image on your machine you want to upload and use, you can do the same way I did here. But you can also see the source attribute here changed. So if you're using an image from a CDN or somewhere else, you can simply put the image source in right here. Perfect. So now that we have the image, um, the first thing I'm noticing is it's a bit large. Uh, so we might actually just cap it a little bit at around... That, I think, that looks a little bit better. There's, we're going to keep it around that size, right? Um, I think I want to start designing the mobile version of my site, and then later on we'll add, sort of adjust the layout as the screen size goes up. So I can either drag in here, or I can actually pick the mobile breakpoint down here in my, um, in my bottom bar, right? So... This immediately looks all right. We can do some small adjustments. I think I want the image to be the first element. And then I am going to get rid of some of this padding. Um, and the other thing is I want a little bit of spacing here. So I want these two heading and paragraph to sort of be close together, but a bit more spacing between these two. And the way I'm going to do that here is actually I'm going to put these two uh, inside a containing div. Uh, so again, we go and select the parent, we click add element, and we type div. And now we can sort of just uh, pop these two in to the div, right? Um, so that also sort of aligned them together. And now if we pick the parent component, we can add a bit of gap here, maybe four. So all elements in total um, that aren't text, use Flexbox for layout. Uh, so that makes it very easy to align everything. It makes it easy to add like a bit of spacing between elements, etc. Um, and you don't have to set anything. This comes out of the box. Um, good. So I think we've got most of the stuff here. So the next thing we want to do is to add a footer where we can have our social links. So I'm going to again go and add an element, say footer. And then for this footer, I... First of all, it's right now we can see it doesn't take up any space. It's just kind of sitting there being empty because there's nothing in it. Um, so first we're going to ask it to be 100% wide. And then we're going to add inside of that, we're going to add a list. Right. Um, 
and let's just cut some of these out. So now we have this one list item. I'm just going to clear the, there's some background color on this list. So we're just going to take that away. Um, so here on this footer, the first, there's a few things we know. First of all, it's supposed to take up 100%, but it's actually not because we've got some padding here on the side. So I'm going to take the padding out from this one. Kill that. And so now we have a full full width of our footer here, right? Um, but now, of course, we lost the padding on the rest of the content. So we're going to add another element in here, and we're going to call that. We're gonna, that's going to be a main element. And um, we're going to add these items into the um, to the main element. And now we can add some padding on the main. So that sort of allows us to have a, a footer that's full width and still have some padding on the remaining content, right? So choosing how you nest this can sort of help you help your layout quite a lot. Um, the other thing is the footer isn't really in the bottom. It's not really at the, the place where we normally would find a footer. Um, so we can change that by making this main element uh, flex. And by that we mean making it take up all the available space. Um, so we're going to go to grow and then set that to one. And that means this main is now going to grow to fit all the size inside, the available sizes in the container. The footer is not set to grow, so that's going to stay its normal sort of height. Now, we can actually see there's a little bit of gap here between the two. That's our gap from last time. We don't actually want that anymore because that's supposed to go on the main now, right? Since we added that in. There we go. Right. Uh, I think I still want this centered. So inside of main, I'm going to go and click horizontal and then centered. Um, yeah, back again. Looks good. Um, next part, let's go and add our actual social link to our list. Right Right now, it just says list item. That's a bit boring. So we're going to pick the list item, and then we're going to add a link here. And just clear out the old text. So inside the link, first of all, I want to change the text to Twitter. And then I kind of want to, let's just zoom in a bit so we can see it a bit better. There we go. And then I want to add a icon next to it. And luckily, we have this table icons, which is fast becoming one of my favorite websites. Um, and we can search for Twitter here. And we actually get this little SVG icon. And if we click an icon in Tabler, then we copy the uh, SVG code to clipboard. And that works really well for us because then we can just go and paste it into Toddle. Um, just going to take the A. So let's change the uh, alignment so it flows like a, so it's like a row alignment. And um, let's rechange the order. I think we want the icon on the left. We can also just adjust the horizontal layout. They should be centered. And let's add a little bit of a gap between them. So that looks pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. Uh, I don't think I want the blue color for this link. Um, but actually, maybe before we change the color, let's go and change the color of the footer. Because then we can actually see the contrast as we are. I want a dark footer like that. I think that looks pretty good. I still think the color is a bit... I think I'm going to go a bit more subtle with that. So we're going to change that to something like... Um, there we go. Right. And of course, uh, since it is a link, we should link to something. So let's go and grab my uh, this my Twitter account. We'll go and grab that and add it into attributes and then the link href. If you're not familiar with the href attribute we're using here, that is in HTML how you denote that a link should point to a specific website. Right? Um so now we're pretty much done with our link here. One thing I want to add is that if we open test mode, we can see when we're hovering it with the mouse here, we change the cursor to a hand. But I kind of want a little bit of sort of visual feedback. Uh, so we're going to go and add a style to this. And you can see here in the top, under we have this style section, and it says default. And default is the styles that applies to uh, an element all the time. They always apply. But in addition to that, you can add extra styles uh, that will only apply some of the time. So in this case, we can add, for example, hover. And then the styles we set here 
are only going to be visible, only going to apply once we're hovering this element. So I'm going to go and set the text color to something a little bit more light, I think. There we go. So let's go and test that. So now we get a nice sort of bump in, in brightness when we hover it. That's exactly what we want. Perfect. Um, so that was the Twitter um, link. Let's add one for LinkedIn as well. So I'm going to just grab my Li element here and hold down Alt while dragging it. So that'll make a duplicate over here. Then I'm just going to move myself over to the right. And so we can start by changing the name here to LinkedIn. Um, and of course, we want a different logo. So let's go back to table icons and say LinkedIn. Copy that. I'm just going to delete this one and add it in again. So now we've got our LinkedIn. Uh, and this already worked with hover stars and everything, right? Um, but we do need, of course, to change the uh, ref. So let's just grab my LinkedIn account. I've got it here. I'm going to copy that. And under attributes, here we go. So now we've got our social link in the bottom. I am pretty happy with that. I think uh, we could, maybe there's a bit much space between them. So let's go and remove that because we've got already got a fair amount of space there. Good. Uh, so let's have a look. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm pretty happy with this. I think this looks pretty good. Um, maybe we want these links to be horizontal. Does that look better? Let's go and take the footer and then change that. Oh, not the footer. Sorry, that's wrong. We want to take the list, change it to horizontal, maybe center the whole thing. I think that works a bit better. Um, and then just let's add some padding to the footer so it looks a bit more spaced out. Right. So that looks pretty good for me uh, for a mobile uh, view. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. As we start scaling this up, or sort of resizing this window, I think at some point this layout doesn't work as well anymore. Uh, so I want to, at this size, or sort of slightly before this, I want to change this so we actually have like the image on the left and then uh, my name and title floating out to the right here, right? Or aligning to the right. Um, and just like we did here with our link, where we had the default style and then add some hover styles, um, to sort of override that in a specific condition, right? We can do the same with our main element here. Um, so what I want to do is I want to add a new style. And here I want to say, when your breakpoint is medium, so when you get above a certain uh, breakpoint, the medium breakpoint we've set, um, I want you to start flowing um, right. And here I then want to align these two center that looks pretty good and then i want to add like i think quite a lot more gap here right that sounds a bit better um so i think that looks quite a lot better and will this sort of styling only applies once we go above that medium breakpoint um so total is what we call mobile first that means by default you're designing for the mobile experience and then if you want conditional styling that only applies to larger screen, you add that specifically after, as opposed to starting from desktop and then adding specific styling for, for mobile, right? Um, and this sort of paradigm has been generally quite popular because it makes you always consider the mobile experience first, and that generally has a tendency to lead to better uh, web experience for actually both mobile and usually also uh, desktop. So now that we have this, we've got our uh, layer flowing. Let's just test that and see as we scroll down, as we resize down, eventually we'll change it down. And because we've set on this element to make it, um, well, actually it's for this to be centered, it'll sort of, because it's a flexbox layout essentially, um, it'll, it'll resize it down as pretty much as far as you go. This is 200 pixels. I don't think there's a lot of this devices that aren't like watches that are 200 pixels so around this size should be around our minimum and it scales pretty well up to larger size so i'm pretty happy with this page 
I think we're about there. Let's go and preview it. So I'm going to click up here in my project panel. And then there's a little preview button here. And that takes me to the live URL of my uh, page. I can quickly check the Twitter link is working. I've got my LinkedIn link working. Perfect. And of course, um, my page is fully responsive and adopts all the way down to mobile and all the way up to um, desktop size. So that's perfect. Now there's only one thing to do because we're still here on this. This is the dev branch that you normally start with in a template project. And so this isn't actually live yet anywhere, right? Uh, if we go to um, just the actual live site, which is the last bit here, we can see that this cell sets template. So this is the, the main branch, the live one is still that old template from, from when we started. So we want to publish our project. So we go here to the publish UI. And it lets us know that our branch is ready to be published. Uh, and it shows us what we've changed. So in this case, we've changed the homepage component. Uh, and it asks us to leave a comment. And this can be very useful. It lets you set a history of everything you've done. So we are going to have, say, um, build the first version. Version of our personal website. There we go. And uh, publish. And now we're ready. It says there's no more changes yet, so we can actually delete this branch. Um, you can keep editing the same branch, but generally it's easier for if you uh, delete a branch once it's published and then move on to create a new one. So we're going to delete this one because we don't need it anymore. And now we're back here at main, and we can see that our main preview already updated. And if we go and preview that, we can see that our caching still uh, was still cached. So here we go. Now that we did a reload, we can see we're actually live. We've got everything up and running, and our website is uh, on the internet. So yeah, as I said, we learned a little bit about how do we build static websites in Total. Uh, how do we do layout, add elements, all the different things, to responsive and what we sometimes call conditional styling. Um, in the next video, we're going to learn how to build dynamic websites. So this is a website we call static because it's the same content every time you see it. Uh, next video, we're going to learn how to build dynamic websites um, where we fetch data from an API and we display that on our page. So uh, if you are not subscribed, please do so now so you'll get notified when the next videos in this series come out. We've got a lot of more great content for you. Thank you very much for watching um, and see you next time.